Hello everybody and welcome once again to New Mastercraft or Pressurize for Minecraft 115. So today we're going to go move up to 116, but first there are just a couple of things I missed out last time. So let's get started. So the first thing to have a look at is this with the dispenser upgrading. I didn't know anything about it, but I did get a comment from Destiny. He told me you can shoot a TNT. So let's set up a TNT point. I've got one prepared over here. <laughs> TNT in particular isn't desperately useful in single player mode, but it might be fun, as he says. It tells me it might be fun in multiplayer. So let's have a look. There are other things we can shoot, which we'll shoot in a minute if I can get out of here, of course. That's the next one. So all we need then is to put the GPS tool into here like this. And then it's going to find its position. And then we can give it a range upgrade. Now we do need to give it a range upgrade, otherwise it will drop somewhere near my... There, so let's just get a couple of range upgrades in here. If you put too many in, it will disappear. Let's take the whole stack and just put it in, say, two. And you can see it then just changes its angle slightly as it does that. So let's fire it off and see what happens. There it goes, lands on the point, blows up a few blocks. <laughs> Not too many as it happens. But that was, um, did it kill anything? Maybe it could have killed some fish, couldn't it? <coughs> Maybe that's a technique for fishing, as you can see, three blocks were blown out of here, but that's no big deal. So we can also shoot things like um, arrows, I guess. There's another thing we can shoot. Let's shoot an arrow out of here and see if that works as well. And I was wondering whether they could actually shoot torches. So let's put one arrow in here like that. Press the button. Uh, it should land on that block. Boink. Oh, I missed it, because I actually set the block one higher. So let's just... Um, Let's just set it a little bit lower and do that again. So let's just get the GPS tool out of here. Um, I need to put some stuff away. Let's just set it onto this piece of dirt here. So it actually hits the dirt <laughs> rather than goes past it. Like that. And then put it back in again. And then we can shoot the arrow again. So let's put another arrow in here. Boom. So I guess it's hit it, but I'm not 100% sure because they have dis they have disappeared. Oh no, there's one here. Look. But I don't. Oh, I did pick it up. So anyway, that's how that works. Um, and so you can shoot all sorts of things out of here, I believe. So let's have a look. Eggs, for example, snowballs, anything you right click to throw. So that's that one dealt with. The other thing I dealt. I haven't done yet is the security station which I'm not going to do today but we will have a look at hackables again because I said you can hack mobs so let's come over here because I know there are a few mobs over here and let's turn on the entity tracker here like this and also in turn on the um, block tracker so you can actually see here the blocks that so here's an infested stone so you can hack it to neutralize you to press H so that infested stone is then gone like that I think there's some mobs down here too. So I'm going to just check what I've got setting I've got for my entity tracker. Oh yes, there's one over here, I think. There's quite a lot of blocks of infested stone around. I didn't think there was very many. Um, let me just check the entity tracker, what I've got set up in here. I should have it, I should have turned it off. Oh, no, it's still got drones in it. Let's get rid of that. Um, and then you can see some mobs over here. So you can press H to disarm him. Let's do that. So he's disarmed and there's a zombie over here, two zombies. And you can disarm them as well. And I think there's a creeper about here. So you can explode him with this. So before we go down and do that, I should just prepare a little bit and just go down and get to this creeper. And then we'll see what happens. I'll see you in a second. Actually, before I do that, I've got a lot of stuff in my inventory I would like to show you about. Um, when I upgrade to 116, there's two things which are going to disappear. This one here, this chunk, single chunk loader from Chunk No Go Bye Bye, will isn't available for 116. But instead, we've got this one here, this single chunk from Chunk Loaders. So let's have a look at making one of these first of all. So it's basically four pieces of iron, so it's a lot cheaper than this. And this gives you a basic chunk loader. The other one over here uses eight ender pearls plus an enchanting table to give you ten of these. Now all, they, all they're really doing is actually doing a force load. Um, 
on the command line, which of course you can't do as a normal person. With cheats on a single player, it's not really a problem. So you can press tab and type force load like that. And I think you can add query and that will show you what loads we've got in here. So these are basically the chunks and you can find those by looking at your um, F3 and I'll tell you which chunks they're in. Um, so it looks like to me there was a couple over there. So let's just have a look, put this down and have a look at it. In fact, I've got another bowl in my hand here. I'm just going to get rid of that as well. Um, I've just been fed, I think, and I have put some rabbit stew in my stuff. Why do I want to put this one down below here? In this corner one. Put the, Oh no, it's actually here. The bowls are in here, so let's put the bowls in that one. So let's put this chunk loaded down here like this and have a look at it. Now, the direction is you put it down is actually interesting here it is it looks like that and then you can right click it and you'll see here on the left hand side is the is the water so if we come from this side here and look at it this direction you'll see that this is over here and if I turn on the minimap um, if I can turn it on no it's waypoints let's turn it on like this you'll see that's the north direction so when you right click it here this is the north direction here like this um, and that's always the case and what you can do is you can unload certain chunks so by clicking it like that unloads these chunks for example like that and if you break it then of course it should also or should also unload those chunks if you're looking at my screen I've got some my entry tracker looks a bit odd but somebody asked me how actually um, how to move the screens around so what you can do to for example to move the pressure screen around here like this you can go to general and you can move the pressure stat screen here like this so you can set it up and i've set it to snap to grid so i do prefer it down the bottom here like this and i had moved this below but it's high because it needs to be it's actually got quite a lot of space it's it can go quite big so you can actually move the entity tracker as well move that screen this is that this is this one like that maybe we could put it here it might be a better place um, and blocks telling me what blocks are trackable. So let's have a look at that. Also, I was actually having a look at this and I was going to make a rocket and I thought you could make a firework rocket. Something I used to be able to do. There's also, I also noticed somebody made a comment on a video and it was about my music was too loud in the video. I was going, well, I don't have any music in my videos usually. It, so I watched the video and yeah, sure enough, Minecraft used to have music in it. It doesn't have any music in it anymore, does it? Right. So let's have a look at <clears throat> the next level of this one here. So you've got these different levels. You've got advanced chunk loaders here and ultimate chunk loaders. So let's make the next one up, which is an advanced. So you use the basic one plus some uh, blaze powder and gold gives you this one. And this one then has a, an area of five by five. So you can put it down like this. And you can right click it and you see you've got a five by five area. Here. So it's a much larger area to chunk load. Um, let me just break that again and have a look at the last one of these because then the last one will be seven by seven of course and that's this one so that needs four redstone one advanced chunk loader two diamonds and two ender pearl uh eyes of ender and we can make the ultimate and of course this one will then be a seven by seven Yeah, indeed. So you start to see the area in here. So if I now go and have a look at my chunk loads here, you'll see there's a lot more being loaded up in here. So, so let's just break this. Pick it up and have a again. And let's have a look at another one of these. You see it's gone back to the to the original few. Fortunately, <laughs> it's overridden by the, the, the one of my screens. Or the, end, or the block tracker screen. Never mind. So that was that one I wanted to show you. And the other thing I didn't show you was the man manometer. Let's have a quick look at that. So the manometer is only works on pipes. So for, well, as far as I can see, it only works on pipes. So you can look at it like this. It doesn't tell you anything. In fact, it tells you here I've got no pressure in it. So if we get take for a pipe here, for instance, and right click it, it tells me the pressure in here is 4.4 bar. And you can see on the on the the one probe pressure screen it's saying 
0.36, so it rounds it up a little bit. This one you can't do, and I don't think you can shift right click on there. No, you can't. It doesn't work. Just on pipes. So this should also be 4.4 bar. Actually, 4.3 bar because it's it's down a little bit. <laughs> you see these hackables? What's that one? It doesn't look like a hackable to me because it's got no H. Just a grass block. Maybe there's something underneath that you can hack. All right. So now I'm going to hack an entity, and I'll be back in a second. So here we are. So there's a creeper over here, I think. A zombie and a creeper. Let's let's explode the creeper, shall we? So it happens. We should be able to hear it. Yep, that killed the zombie by the looks of it too. <laughs> so let's go and hack a zombie over. It's 40 meters to 27 meters. Actually killed quite a few of those guys. So let's just dig away along here a bit further. Actually, you can see that I've, I've hit a chamber, haven't I? Oh yes, some part of the mine, and there's the residue of the <laughs> from the explosion. I haven't been to this part of the mine yet, but it looks a bit so. Let's just put this down here, and clearly I've got to go and do a bit more exploring. Oh, another minecart. How about that? You can't hack the minecart. What's it got in it? Ah, oh, it's got all sorts of bits and pieces in it. Okay, good. <laughs> Detector rails and all the rest of it. That's good. So, new ex new area to explore. Well, I won't do that on camera. I just want to find if I can get a mob. Here we've got a zombie. Let's hack him. Can I hack him? No, I can't. Why not? Hack him. There we go. So, he should be hacked. Any second. Oh, try that again. I thought I could hack zombies. I just can hack creepers. Okay. <laughs> You know, there are all sorts of animals you can actually hack, so let's just get the sword ready. Sort him out. By the looks of it, I have been up here. But not everywhere. Okay. New part of the mine. Anyway, I'll come back to that. I don't want to do that now. So, I'll see you when I'm back up at the surface. So you can hack sheep by the looks of it. H to change the colour. Let's see what happens with this one. Um, Alright, he's changed to pink. And again. If I can get one. Oh, no, he's very good. <laughs> I wonder if there's any other animals. What can you do with cows? I can't. Difficult to see, unfortunately. So look, just try and get one by itself. Can, oh, it can infuse with fungi, in other words, make a mushroom cow. Let's just hack one of those guys and see what happens. <laughs> and sure enough, we have a mushroom cow. Let me just turn off the, the tracker a second. Which one's that? The entity tracker? That's that one. So we have a, a mushroom now. Or, is it a mushroom? can't see it it's too far away anyway never mind <laughs> so that's it for this, uh, this this part of the series I'm now going to exit the world and come back into Minecraft 1.16 um, before I do that I'm going to replace oh I didn't show you that did I, I wanted to show you that too and you did actually pick up that minecart I want to replace the um, the chunk loaders I've got in here with the other ones so I think I've got some chunk loaders set up heat pipe I'm pretty sure I made another one of those chunk loaders um, because what you can do with the other chunk loaders is you can split them into little ones so I'm not sure, oh there we go, there's a basic chunk loader and what you can do with this, you can just simply put it like that and then these ones just do a single chunk exactly the same as the ones from um, the other mod of chunk loaders so for example here I can dig this one out here like this I'm getting a bit suffering a bit of lag and I think I've got no space in my inventory. I'll be back in a second, let's get rid of this, some of this space over here. Should have a bit of, a bit of space and maybe I've got some seeds in here. I have good. Um the rest I'll deal do with later on. So let's just get rid of this chunk loader here and replace it with a different one. Like that. So we've got this one here. It does have one loaded chunk in here. Um in fact, I could even turn those off as it happens. Can you turn those off? Yes, you can. Good. And then that way I can find uh, if I've got any missing ones. So, right, I'll be back in a short while <clears throat> when I've replaced all the ones I can find. So I'll see you in a short while. 
Right, I'm back in version 116. And as you notice, the watering can is always on. I just have to probably turn it off. Um, there's a couple of things you have to change when you move it across into different versions. And this is one of them here. This is leaking air. So we have to break it and just fix it. It'll probably run out of it. What the problem is, is just need to replace this block here. Pick them all up. I did, all we do have to do is simply replace it and then it'll be fine again. So the pressure chamber valve, I don't know whether this is the case in all cases, but certainly when it's placed horizontally, I'm just hoping that the rubbish collector didn't go and take the bits I need. <laughs> no, I'm all right. Look. And the last pane. And when you've done this, then it'll actually be okay. It's run out of... Um, fuel at the moment, so if I've got any fuel in there, no I haven't, I've got two pieces of fuel in here, so let's just put those into that, and then it should stop leaking, so that's one of the two I've got to change, and it should have some books in there as well, I think, I've probably got the books, actually I'll keep some of these books with me, I'll, I want to enchant uh, something later on, so let's just keep those, so the other one I've got to fix is out at the back here, if I can get through those, actually what's happened is my... I need to change something. Um, some of the settings get reset, and you'll see this one is leaking like crazy. I can't stop it so easily, or can I? No, I don't think I can. But we'll just fix it. So I've got my magnet. Yes, I've got my magnet on. do this one let's get the chamber wall down here and then the glass so that fixed that and then these of course are not producing any more fuel in fact I think I've got <laughs> I've got a lever here which is not, no longer used <laughs> the rubbish collector wanted to pick it up so those are those are some changes which have happened that you have to watch out for you'll notice also the mini map has now changed I'm using um, zeros minimap as opposed to journey map because it doesn't exist in 116 yet but one thing i should do is to change my speed so let's go and have a look at the speed i've got my settings to set control u so it's the run speed it's 100 percent. i find it a little bit faster i'll bring it down to about two thirds like that and then we'll have a look at this there's a new feature that um dash just put in which is a great one and that is the coordinate widget here. I mean, using, I use the coordinate widget quite a lot. For example, you're assigning variables like this. And what I want to do is I want to set the points in this. So, for example, here I've got a... Actually, I haven't got it with me at the moment. Let's go and get it. An area widget. I think the area widget's in... This chest here. Something's changed, I noticed as well. What was that? Transfer gadget. Oh, transfer gadget looks completely different. How oh, interesting. Uh, let's have a look what the transfer gadget looks like when we actually put it down on chest. If we can see it, this oh, here we are. Look, we've got the two bits already ready. Oh, yes, you can see it now. That's great. And it's got an O for output. Fantastic. So, next thing we can have a look at is um, the jackhammer, I think. Uh, no, I was going to have a look at the area widget first, wasn't I? I didn't do that because I've got this this area tool. I need to pick up the area tool here. It's got two points on it. If you look at the area tool here, you'll see you've got red one is point one and the green one is point two. And the two buttons on the um, gadget, as you can see here, it represents left and right. So for example, I would like to say, let's, put a point up here let's put a point on this it doesn't matter much shift click it of course from if it's got an opened interface and then we'll come down here and we shall put another point down here like this this time we'll put point one i think around about here would be good so what it's doing at the moment is a shape it's probably this is the cylinder this will be the cylinder so let's go and have a look at this here change area so yeah that's a cylinder tube for example let's make it a pyramid we'll make it on the y-axis and we'll make it hollow 
like that. So then you can see there's a pyramid shape here. Now, this is very handy because then you can see which points you want to set up um, on a device. So for example, here we can come along here and then we can set, say, the two points for the pyramid. Let's put down a second one down here, for instance, like that. And then you could, oops, try again. <laughs> I shall just duplicate this one. And this one, if I can't duplicate them, that is not doing very well today. Let's put that into there like that. And then we can right click this one here. And we can select an, an area point. So one of the points you can select, for example, here is point one. So we can select the right button and that selects this one here. And you press escape and it gets set into here. And the same for this one here, for example, let's select it again, select the area. We can use the area tool. Actually, you can also use the Amadron tablet for that matter. Like that. So they've not got variables in. It doesn't haven't got variables set, so I need to set a variable, for example, like P1 and say point two. One. And then they would be okay. You also notice that these are slightly transparent. They weren't so transparent before. In fact, liquids are also transparent. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a jackhammer. If we have a look at what Pneumaticraft has got in it, there's actually quite a lot of new things. And I'm going to start with the jackhammer because it's actually hard <laughs> to make, for instance, a iron bit like the drill bit. We have to put drill bits into the jackhammer. And the jackhammer, as far as I can see, can we press shift for info? Yes. Sneak right click to open the GUI, setup GUI and right sneak mouse wheel to switch dig mode. So we will build one of those first of all. Let's have a look what we need for it. Okay, two diamonds, one pneumatic cylinder, one pressure tube, low pressure tube, plastic sheets, compressed iron and a compressed iron block. That's not too expensive. Let's get the ingredients ready for that. I should have most of the ingredients ready. I've got one of those, that's good. I've got some compressed iron, that's also good. Plastic sheet, I'll take those. Don't need that with me. And we'll take a pipe. There might be no pipes in here that I can see. Um, and we needed a block of compressed iron as well. I think two diamonds. Like that. And then we should be able to make the jackhammer. Unless I've forgotten something, which is highly likely. Yes, one t pressure tube. Um, let me get rid of this data right here. And then we've got enough space for that. And I th reckon I've got a lot of them somewhere. I think they should be in here. Right, one will do. So we should be able to make the jackhammer now. Like that. And this will actually start to charge because it's in my hotbar. So we can then shift right click to open this up like this. So we have different modes. So it needs a bit. Pneumatic needs a drill bit. I also can have a book so you can put silk touch or fortune in here. And this one here, oh, it tells you the digging shape. So you can change the digging shape. Very neat actually, didn't, didn't know about that. So, but the hard ones to make the drill bits, we can either make a cheap drill bit, but at this stage of the game, I might as well go for an expensive netherite. Of course, I haven't done any drilling in the nether, so that's not much of a chance at the moment. But the diamond drill bit looks interesting. So for that, we need a thermo pneumatic processing plant with eight buckets of lubricant, one block of diamonds. That's not too difficult. We need four and a half bar. That's actually not too difficult. We also need 500 degrees C. <laughs> that's hard. Um, so what I'm going to do is I shall set up a little area and I shall see you in a few seconds when I've got everything prepared. Right, I'm ready. So I've built an advanced liquid compressor. The reason for that is it, it will produce more air than the um, compressed air than an ordinary one. And we actually need quite a lot of compressed air. I was trying to do with this with three um, liquid compressors didn't work. I couldn't get it to work. So what, so what we need to do is we need a thermo pneumatic processing plant. I'm going to use regulate, regulator tubes on this as well. And we're going to use advanced pressure pipes. So we're going to connect every machine to an advanced pressure pipe. So let's just set it up, for example. I think I'd like to do it just one block away like this, because then you, you get a chance of, to turn this off and on. 
as you want it. So we need to have three of these. Now they all link in when you do this, but that doesn't matter. As soon as you put the pressure regulators on, they will actually disconnect. So let's put, I've got three pressure regulators here, or regulator tube modules. We just attach those like that. And as you see, they all disconnect. And then I'm going to put onto these some um, advanced PCBs. Now these are only going to are only going to give um, maximum 4.9 bar, so which is great. I should possibly need to expand this out, but I think we're okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to put down two vortex tubes. This one's actually got the vortex tubes can take 20 um, baths, so that's no big deal. I want one to go that way, and I want one to go this way, like that, and that should give us enough capacity to make this go up to 500 degrees. I might actually work with the with just one, but I have noticed that it did when I was testing it, I couldn't get it to work with just one. But I didn't do that extensive testing. I was trying to do it in a place I shouldn't have been doing it in. <laughs> right, so here we have this. I think that is possibly the wrong way around. So let's turn it around like that. And that should connect in. So what we can then do is we can put I only want four buckets of eight buckets of liquid uh, in here so we'll, I'll just put this tank down like this and we should take eight buckets out and I'm going to do this with, the book, with a single bucket like this and I'm going to get a block of diamonds how many have we got in here? ten, two more So we've got eight buckets of lubricant in here, which is what we need. I can pick this up. I also need some fuel, of course. And I should also put into here, um, and in fact, that's actually very important because if these machines are fairly expensive, we're going to put an advanced security. I'm also going to put in some uh, volume up upgrades as well. And it's night time, so I'm going to have a quick sleep. Uh, volume upgrades are in this chest here. So I shall take, um, I shall take a couple, I think. Probably don't need that many. Let's take four. And we'll put them into here so it gives a bit of capacity to do it. Because these don't take any upgrades at all. There's nothing to do here and here. Um, but I probably should set up the redstone here as well so we can turn it off if this pressure gets too high. Uh, but I'll also put on a pressure regulator here. So we'll be back in a second when it's daytime and I've got the bits ready. So here we are ready. So um, what I'm going to do is I'll put the block of diamonds in here to start with. And then it tells you you get the thing. And so the recipe is then valid. In fact, you know it's valid anyway. If you put a, um, this will emit a redstone signal if you've got a valid recipe. So problems, it's not enough heat and it's poorly insulated. Oh, I forgot about the insulation. Okay, I need to go and get two blocks are exposed to the air, which wastes heat. So I'll, I'll go and get some heat. Um, I'll do that now, actually. Um, some heat insulation. Insulation. I'll be back in a second. So I've got some thermal lagging. So that should be one face which needs it, and also the top one by the looks of it. So then that should not have a problem. Let's have a look at it again. So it's not enough heat and not enough pressure. So let's put in one bucket of fuel into here. I'm using kerosene because we've got plenty of it now this should start to pressure up and i should also put on here a release valve now it shouldn't be too much of a problem like that so worst case is this will release pressure at 19.9 bar and this is starting to increase let's have a look at how well we're doing this tool best one to use so we've got a little bit here and the and the temperature is going up i might need to insulate this uh, and the pressure should also be increasing. So it's it's going up, air is going up 0.25 for bar. It's going to take a while. And I should also turn these off because these are going to generate heat. And I don't want them to generate heat just yet. So I'll just get a couple of levers. I might have a couple with me as I do. And turn these off. So when they're off, this sh this should be then off, I think. Threshold 4.5, but I haven't actually set the threshold. So, advanced GB rate 4.9 bar. I think, I think we can get away with 3 bar. So I'll set it to 3. Turn that off like that, and then this shouldn't heat up. So 
threshold zero three bar receiving redstone signal um maybe i have to set it up like this i probably do yes so we'll have it on the highest signal we'll have it at zero bar oops not, not exactly zero there we go so that's now got a high signal therefore it's got a zero coming out of here which is great we'll do the same on this one as well i'm just wondering if that was a change actually i was thinking about it so we'll have a high one is zero and the low one is three bar it probably it's probably a bit reversed in logic but it's turning on to turn it off maybe i can do it the other way around if i want to and then this one's going to just give this pressure now it's not going to give any more pressure than 4.9 which is great so you can see this is slowly increasing in, pre in pressure here and the temperature is actually going down because I've turned these two um, vortex cannons off like that I'm going to watch out for this one I don't want it to be too hot if it's too hot it's going to which it is already I should just go and get some more um, I should just cool this down I'll be back in a second so in this case, I'm just going to use a block of compressed compressed iron, and I'm going to just use. I haven't got enough um, heat sinks. We'll just, but we'll put on three to start with. We'll do one at the top, and then two at the side. So one on the side here, one on the top. Strange. <laughs> mm. I'm not sure what happened then. Was that because I stood on it? My no, these my arm is all charged up nicely. So we'll look at this again. So the pressure is slowly coming up, as you can see. Uh, when it, so the kerosene is going down. And let's have a look. So as long as it's going up in in pressure here, that's fine. Um, if I need to, I can actually put in here some um, a speed upgrade. The temperature should be dropping. I hope if it's not dropping, I'm going to go and get some more heat sinks. It is dropping i probably need to get some more heat sinks anyway so this is going to take a while to get up to five bar so i'll go and get some heat sinks anyway and i'll also get another bucket of kerosene just in case i'll see you in a second so we've got more than it was also night time so i had a few mobs around uh it was also now six bar so we can turn on these and see if we can get this thing to to work let's go around the side here and this one and that should these should start to heat up it's a little bit of lag when they start to heat up. You can see the temperature is going up nicely. So we've got to reach 500. And I'm hoping that with the air... You see, you've got plenty of pressure in here, 4.9. And sure enough, we're going to reach this no problem whatsoever. As you can see, it's already scaling up to 1,000. And that's basically it. We can then turn everything off, I think, as soon as it makes the, the tool and then we'll have a look at it once we've got the tool so this is the hardest one to make the other ones are much cheaper of course you've got the iron one which is also made in the we again with probably two buckets of lubricant and one iron ingot the next one up would be in the drill the compressed iron one which is four buckets of lubricant and um one compressed iron we've got the block of diamond one which will probably be better still but it's got a bigger range you'll notice that the dig motor one by one one by two one by three three by three plus and it does veins and logs and this one here has got even more do we have to go and find some another right over here we've got it we have our stuff i thought that would have used up all the fuel in there actually so look turn it off i'm sure it had eight maybe it's changed um let's double check the recipe yes eight buckets oh it's just a visual thing and did that actually disappear out of here good so there we are so this i can leave this running these these will cool down slowly as time goes on as you can see temperature is coming down here now and this can run and just keep the pressure up it doesn't do any harm to have a little bit of extra air pressure around whenever you need it so this one will actually max out at whatever temperature set it to being pressure I set it to being here which is doesn't tell me after I click it 10 bar so at 10 bar this is going to turn off uh, I'm not sure I actually even got another bucket of lubricant I didn't actually I forgot to get it but there's enough lubricant in there uh, kerosene probably to bring the temperature up to 10 bar right 
So now let's get this, have a look at this jackhammer. So we shift right click and then we can put in the diamond bit. I've got some coal over the back there. Let's go and have a look at this. Let's drop down there. I haven't actually done very much with the jackhammer so far. I just found out it was difficult to make the um, <coughs> to make the tool. So if we break this one here like this, sort of slow um, to break one piece of coal, but it's got a different modes. So let's have a look. So it says shift and mouse wheel, vein miner, ores and logs. Okay, let's try. Oh yeah, it's V for vein. I see. So if we do control and Let's do that control and U again. No, it's control and right click, isn't it? Shift right click, sorry. So you've got the vein miner here. So that's the veins plus, so we can do a three by three. Or maybe that's unavailable. Yeah, that's unavailable. So that's only going to be there with a netherite bit, I see. So for instance, we could do a two by two. So f let's just do a two by two down here. Sure enough, it actually that's left a block, <laughs> a water block. So it's picking up coal, but now we can of course improve this by getting a book. So let's have a look at the books again. So we've got Silk Touch or we've got Fortune. I'd like to go and get a Fortune book. Um, I shall prepare some stuff and I'll be back in a second. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the, you've probably even forgotten about it, uh, the enchanting area over there and I'll be back in a second. Right, I'm back again. I'm actually just going to enchant. I've got a gold pickaxe here. I'm not sure if it's going to give me good stuff or not. Or oh, try, we'll try it and we'll put in um, some of this. How much you got? I'm breaking three, fortune one, efficiency two. That's not very good. Let's just put that into a book and then we should be able to cancel that particular trade bane of anthropods quick charge protection we'll just take four um try again i hope i get different ones efficiency four efficiency three in that one with the question mark we'll try this we'll see what i'll get so i'll get i'm breaking through an efficiency three that's not very good i'll try it with the diamond pickaxe gold pickaxes are better actually i've got a Another gold pickaxe. Let's just try. Let's make another gold pickaxe. Uh, see if we can get the the one I want, which is basically a fortune one. If I don't get it, I've got silk touch back at home. Efficiency four, efficiency two, efficiency two. I'm going to try again with this one. I'm breaking three and efficiency four again. Shame. <laughs> last time I was uh, last time I was unlucky. I was lucky and I got a. Um, I'll try this one. Efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. I just got efficiency for you. See, with with gold, but it's gold, but it's better than diamond because you get the extra enchants. So I've been unlucky with that one. Um, there's not much I can do in that case. So I'm going to just go back and find a book. Maybe I'll just come and try that again. I've got a definitely a silk touch book, and I've got a an I've got a fortune pickaxe. Anyway, so we can always break stuff with this Fortune 3 pickaxe in here. So I'll be back in a second with the book. Well, I just disenchanted these two. So pickaxes, so we can actually go and reuse those. I did find some books in my collection of enchanted books with both Silk Touch and Fortune 3. So let's go and... Oh, they need to be on here, don't I? So let's go and put those onto these pickaxes. So I've got a gold pickaxe plus one of these books. This is power three, pursing three. It's not that great. So we end up with silk touch on here. And then we'll do the same with this one here. So we've got a fortune three. See, this one was better. Frostwalker two and efficiency four, silk touch. But I've got a fortune three and a respiration three. I don't need respiration because we've got, ex our armor has basically got it. Anyway, as you remember, if we just go down here with the aerial interface, um, you'll see that the bubbles just keep popping down and going up again. So that's caused by the aerial interface, because having compressed air is a good thing to have. So now I can then disenchant these two to get the silk tuck and the efficiency books. 
Um, just wondering if I've actually got enough books. I think I'm short of a book. So let's go and get another book. I'll be back in a second with the book. Actually, we had enough books. Look, you can see I've got a Fortune 3 and a Silk Touch book. So we'll keep, put those onto the tool. In the meantime, I'm going to shove these other books in there. So we can, for the next disenchant that I would like to do. Um, so now, let's go and put this, go back over here and have a look. So we can also vein mine logs, but here we've got, how many bits have we got left now? Just two. So let's just put this in here like this. Let's put the fortune book, book in. Maybe no, let's put the silk touch book in here. And then, so then when we do this one, let's that set to that setting. Let's just change that again. Let's set it to vein miner ores and logs. So I should then simply be able to Sure enough, got two books, uh, two blocks, two blocks of coal there, and logs. Let's go and try and logs as well. It's going to chop the whole tree down. Ah, oh, fantastic! How about that then? And the rubbish collector's taking the the extra tree away for us. So there we have it. Of course, fortune's going to do exactly the same as we've done before. But I think that's it for this episode. I've covered a little bit mostly to do with that but let's have a look at what else we can do in here so i i couldn't find my memory card i've got a memory stick somewhere with lots of xp on it but i couldn't find it so there's a lot more things that have been added in 116 from that so we can start from here i think so we've got wheat flour sourdough spawn of course centers sour bro sourdough bread chips codding chips and you can look at this one here it's giving you how many that's six uh, food bars plus 12 saturation so codden chips is a great one and then you've got a drop of glycerol which you probably use for the stuff bandage do you know what? i'm not sure what bandage is let's look at press info on that one restores health okay I'm just as um other mods do let's have a look we've got those ones yeast culture which was obviously made for that. We've got a fluid mixer, we've got some vacuum traps, a spawner extractor, an empty spawner. Great, so I'll have a look at doing some of these in the next episode. And we've got a whole bunch of lamps in here as well, brown lamps, and more fluids. So we had diesel, etching acid, gasoline, kerosene, LPG before, lubricant, memory essence. Now that's new. Crude oil, that's not. I think memory essence is new. Molten plastic yeast culture, ethanol, vegetable oil, biodiesel. Now, biodiesel is interesting. Well, that's it for this episode. I do hope you've enjoyed it. So until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.